I know humans, my name is Kenyo and Overload, and this video will be absolutely insane. Because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the perfect hands inside Stable Diffusion using Molten Control Net, 3D Blender, and a little bit of Photoshopping. So let's go. Now, in this video, we're gonna start by downloading and installing Blender. But you might be thinking, Blender? Well, why? What are you gonna use it for? Well, we're gonna use Blender for this. Because a user by the name of Toy XYZ created this absolutely fantastic 3D model of a character bones that look like open pose for Blender, which is well exactly what it sounds like. It is a 3D model that works in Blender and that has the exact same shape and color scheme as the skeleton in the open pose editor. But there is a lot of additional features that you don't have in the open pose editor. And that is the fact that lately he has updated the model to include hands and feet, meaning that you can pose the character in any way you want and also have hands and feet visible in the image. But again, this is not the end. This is not the most interesting feature. The most interesting feature is the fact that you can export depth maps from hands inside of Blender. Meaning that from the exact same pose, you can export the skeleton and the depth map from hands separately and then combine them together in say, Stable Diffusion with the multi control net option. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on the blender.org page, and then you're gonna click on Download Blender. And then finally, click here to download Blender. Then you're gonna install Blender onto your computer, just click next until everything is installed. Then you're gonna click on the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this character bones page, and here you can purchase this model for either absolutely free, or a price that you choose yourself. Now obviously if you have the money you should definitely support creators like him. <laughs> and me too by the way. And once you get the model you should now have a link to the entire model content. Oh and by the way this creator is often updating his own model very often. So as I was recording this video he actually created a brand new model. Which now allows you to not only export the depth map but also a canny map inside of Blender. So then you're gonna click on view content, scroll down, then choose the latest version as of right now it is the 4.6 and then click on download. This will download a zip archive onto your computer, then you're just gonna right click and then extract. And inside you're gonna have a Blender file. And all you have to do is just double click on this Blender file right here. And this should automatically open the project in Blender. Now I know this seems a little complex, but don't worry, this is actually pretty easy to use. And I'm gonna show you how. Now I'm not by any means a Blender specialist, this is actually technically the first time that I use Blender in my entire life, and I still managed to do it anyway. Now what you see right here in the center, this is your 3D scene. And you can rotate around the character using the middle mouse button. The left click allows you to select objects. So here you have a bunch of options that you can select to either move an object, rotate it, or a combination of all of them. But the two options that we're going to be using the most is the move and the rotate option. This is all you really need. And here, this is the interaction mode. In the object mode, the only thing that you can choose to select and move are objects, such as a camera for example. So for example, if I select my character and I choose the move option, the only thing that allows me to do is just move the entire character around and nothing else. So if you want for example to move the character around, if you want to move the limbs, you need to be in another specific mode, which is called the pose mode. And to enter this pose mode, you're gonna select your character, you can for example click on this arrow right here, and then a new mode will appear called pose mode. And in this mode, this is the mode that you're gonna be using to pose your character around. So for example, if I select the move option, and I come here, and I select the hand, if I try to move it around, as you can see, the entire hand moves around long. If I grab the feet, again, the entire leg move around too. If I select the rotate option, this allows me to rotate the entire hand around. So if you watched my previous 3D video, these colored circles should be familiar to you, because these colored circles tells you in what direction this allows you to rotate the limb around. Now again, if this is the first time that you see this, I know this might sound complicated, but definitely try it out yourself and you'll see in a few minutes, you should get the hang of it. Now don't worry, I will explain a little bit more as we go along, but me personally, Personally, I think that the best way to learn something is to play around with it. So before we go any further, let me actually create a pose for my character. Let's say that for example I want my character to make the peace sign. And yes, I mean the peace sign, the actual peace sign. Yes, thank you, I saw your comments, I did not know that. So to make the peace sign, we're gonna start by moving this end around. So I'm gonna select it and then move it in place, let's say something like here. 
rotate the camera around a little bit to position it correctly. If you need to move the camera up and down, you're gonna left click this button right here and by holding this button you're gonna go up or down. So let's say I want my hand at a certain angle, I'm gonna select my hand, then click on rotate and then click and drag to rotate this hand around and then put the hand in the position that I like. It might take some time for you the first time, but you know just play around with it, try it out yourself. I'm not a 3D specialist by any means, but I still manage to make it work anyway. And if for some reason you make a mistake, you can simply press Ctrl Z to undo the action. Also, if you need for example to move the entire character, everything except the legs, you can click on this plane right here and then move it around in a position that you like. Okay, so for example, I like this general position, and now I need to rotate the phalanges around to close the hand. Now if you want to bend the finger, you can simply select part of the finger right here, and then a brand new option will appear that allows you to bend all phalanges if you drag it to the right, which is really super useful. Now it doesn't do it for the entire finger, it only does it for the phalanges, meaning that you still need to select the base of the finger anyway, then select the rotate option, and then rotate the finger to close it down on the hand. And then once you put one finger into place, you're gonna do the same with the other one. Now again, I'm not a 3D specialist, I'm sure a lot of people will do it better than me, so if you have any advice, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments. So once you have finished putting your hand and fingers in a position that you like, you should have something like this. Now again, it might not be perfect, but for me, it's good enough. And now, the next step is to actually export this entire thing. And to do this correctly, we need to move the camera around. If you zoom out enough, you should see this box right here, which is basically the camera that will basically allow you to see what kind of images you'll be able to export. So for example, if you click on zero on the numpad, you will see the scene from the vision of the camera. And as you can see right here, our entire character is visible in the entire field of the camera. And if this is good enough for you, perfect, you don't need to do anything else. However, for me, I would like to only export and see the upper body of my character. And to do this, all I need to do is just move the camera closer to my character. So I'm gonna click on zero again on my numpad, go into my object mode, select my camera, select the move option, and you will see here a brand new XYZ option appear that will allow me to move the camera closer to my character. And as you can see in this box right here, this is the vision of the camera. So if I move it a little bit on the right, just like this, and if again I click on zero, you can see now that since we are now closer to our character, we have now a closer look of our character. So now I'm just gonna move it even closer to maybe something like this, and again I'm gonna adjust it until I like the final image, maybe move it back a little bit, and I think this should be good enough. So again if I press on zero, you see now that this is the scene that we'll be able to export from Blender, and we have everything that I need visible. We have the hand, we have the fingers, and the position that I like. So now we are basically done and we are ready to export. And what we're gonna export from this is that not only we're gonna export the open pose model of the 3D character, but we're also gonna export the depth map of our hand and also the canny map. And to select what kind of map you want to export, we're gonna be using this view right here. Now the only two buttons that you really need to be aware of is this button right here, which will select it will either apply the depth map model or the canny map model. And you need to select one of these to export the map that you want. And the second button that you need to be aware of is this button right here, which when selected will either enable this area in the render or not. So for example the way everything is set up, if I click here on render and then click on render image, you see now that we have now a full depth map render of the entire 3D model and the hand right here. Which is cool, but this is not what we want, because we only want to render the hand and nothing else. And to do this, all you need to do is simply click on this button right here to disable the skeleton in the render. So now, if I click on render again, and then render image, we get a perfect 3D depth map of our hand and nothing else, which is perfectly exactly what we want. And then to save this image onto our computer, you're gonna click here on image, click save as, select a folder where you want to export it, rename your file, and then click on save as image. And now if we go inside our export folder, you will see the depth mat of our hand that we just exported, ready to be used inside Stable Diffusion. So now what we're gonna do is export a canny map of our hand. This way you can either use the canny map or the depth map of our hand inside control net or even both of them combined for even more precision. And for this you're gonna deselect the depth map, select the canny map, and now we have the canny map model loading inside Blender. But unfortunately, if you come here, click on the render, and then render image, you will see something like this, which is definitely not what we want. 
This is not a canny map. And to fix this, you need to go into compositing, zoom out, and you will see here a bunch of nodes. And we need to change a few things to make it work. So first, you're gonna come here and take out this node right here, then take this node right here, then you're gonna click here, drag it until you see a little plus. This will bring a text prompt, and here you're gonna type invert and you're gonna select this invert color right here so then you're gonna put this node then you're gonna click here from color and you're gonna connect this node to normalize and finally you're gonna click here from composite and you're gonna connect it to the invert node and now if we click on render render image you will see a perfectly rendered canny map this is exactly what we want so then you're gonna click on image save as select the folder rename your file and then save as image and finally we need to export the skeleton model of our character so for this you're gonna click here to disable the canny map click here to enable the bones in the render then go back to compositing click on this button right here to disable RGB invert and now if we click on render and then render image you now see our perfect open pose model ready to use inside the control net panel and then again if you want to export the image click on image select the folder rename your file and then click on save as image and now we have inside our folder three different files an open pose image a canny map and a depth map of our hands and now let's put them all together inside stable diffusion so then in stable diffusion in control net you're gonna come here and for each model you're gonna select the image that we just exported so first i'm gonna choose the open pose model Model, click enable, do not choose anything for the preprocessor because it is already done. Here choose the open pose model, then for the second control net model, you're gonna choose the depth map, click enable, again nothing for the preprocessor, choose the depth model, and again for the last one you're gonna choose the canny map, click enable, again nothing for the preprocessor, and here you're gonna choose the canny model. Then you're gonna write your prompt, choose more or less the same ratio as the images that we just exported, and now if I click on generate, it gives me something like this, which is really really cool. And the hand is pretty much perfect. And as you saw by combining the open pose skeleton together with the separate depth map of the hand and the separate canny map of the hand, it creates this beautiful image that is in the exact same position that the skeleton that we just created previously and whose hand is in the exact same shape and position as the depth map and canny map that we just exported. These three images combined inside control net to create this beautiful image. So as you saw, this 3D model is really super, super powerful. Powerful. And you can do this for any character in any position that you want. And not only you can do this for hands, but you can also do it for feet too. Which basically makes this one of the most powerful tools that you have to create perfect hands inside stable diffusion. And that's really really cool. But what can you do if you don't want to use Blender? What if your computer cannot run Blender? What is your solution then? Well don't worry because I'm gonna show you another way. And we're still gonna use 3D but this time we're gonna use it inside our browser. And we're gonna use something called Magic Poser, which is a website that I already showed you in my previous 3D video, which is basically the exact same as Blender, but inside your browser, where you can pose your character in any position that you want. So again, I'm not gonna explain how this works in details in this video. If you're interested in knowing more about this, I highly suggest that you watch my previous video on the subject. So what we're gonna do here is simply select our character, choose a preset position, put our hand in a position that we like, select a preset pose for our hand, then we're gonna come here and toggle the ground guidelines, click on preview, and then take a screenshot of the entire image. And then inside Stable Diffusion, you're gonna come here into the Open Pose Editor, which is again another extension that I showed you in my previous video, and then we're gonna click on Detect from Image. And you're gonna select the image that we just created. And as you can see, it will automatically create a skeleton based on the character's position. But since this is not 100% perfect, you can always come here and move around the skeleton a bit to put it in the right position. And then once the skeleton is posed correctly and you're happy with the result, you're gonna save the PNG just in case and then click on send to text to image. And with this, as you can see, it was automatically sent inside control net. So now we're gonna click on enable control net. Do not select anything from the preprocessor because again, it was done automatically. Choose the open pose model. Then you're gonna write your prompt. Select again the same ratio image that we have right here. In my case, it's simply a square. And then click on generate. And this is the final result. Now that's great and all, but the hand is not in the exact same position that we created in the 3D software. Which of course makes sense because we did not use any depth map or canny map inside control net. We just have a general pose of our character. But don't worry because we're gonna make it better very soon. 
So first you're gonna click here and send to extras. You're gonna upscale it. For the upscaling, you're gonna choose the length source of scaler, resize by four times, and then click on generate. Once this is done, you're gonna right click, copy image, and then you're gonna send to impaint. And now the plan is very simple. We're gonna go online, find an image of a hand that we like, do some photoshopping, and then we're gonna send the picture back inside Stable Diffusion to do some minor in painting. And if you don't have Photoshop, don't worry because you can use a website like photopea.com, which is an absolutely amazing website that I've been using for years. It's amazing. And it's basically a free Photoshop online. And since we have copied the image previously, you can click on new project, click create, and then control V to paste the image. And then in Google, you're gonna search for the hand sign that you're looking for. And in our case, it was a kind of like a Spider-Man pose, a Spider-Man hand pose, which is what I input right here in the search bar. And then you're gonna select an image that you like. And I think I'm simply gonna choose this one. So I'm gonna right click, click on copy, and then I'm gonna paste the image right here. And all we need to do now is simply remove the background and then position the hand correctly where it's supposed to be. So in my case, I can simply use the magic wand tool, select the black background and then click delete. And now we are left with only the hand. Now here, I'm just gonna make a copy of our layer just in case. So Ctrl J to make a copy. And then we're gonna erase part of this image. So I'm simply gonna select this area right here where the hand is supposed to be. And then I'm gonna click on edit, fill, in Fill, I'm gonna select the Content Aware option and then click OK. And as you can see, it will automatically fill the selection using similar pixels and colors around this area. And as you can see, in our case, the hand completely disappeared, which is exactly what we want. And now I'm gonna select the hand, scan it down a little bit, and then position it where the hand is supposed to be. And if you want a little bit more precision, what you can do is come here in Edit, Transform, and then click on Warp. And here you can choose several area of the image that you can modify and warp to better correspond to the image. So in my case, something like this looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna try my best to blend it as best I can. I'm just gonna select the Eraser tool, click here to decrease the hardness, increase the size, make a copy of the layer just in case. And then I'm slowly gonna erase part of the hand to make the colors blend better with the colors of the arm. So something like this looks pretty good. So then I'm also gonna come here, select the Eyedropper tool, Select the base color of our arm, create a new layer, choose the paint bucket tool, then paint the entire area, right click, clip it mask, so that only the hand is colored. Then here I'm going to choose from normal to multiply and decrease the opacity a little bit to something like 60%. And now if you zoom out and you look at the color of the hand, so this is before, which looks very, very white, maybe a little too much white. And now this is the after with the layer of color right here, which makes the hand blend a little bit better than before. And now all you have to do is just export the image in Size stable diffusion. So just come here, click on the files, export as, select PNG, put a name for your file, and then click save. And then in stable diffusion, in inpaint, you're gonna delete this image, replace it with the image that we just exported. So then you're gonna select your brush and then paint over the hand. Then you're gonna scroll down, choose only masked, choose a high resolution, decrease the denoising strength to something like 0.1 and then click generate. And this is the final result. And as you can see now the hand is now way better integrated into the style that we use right here. And now if we want to make the image even better, you're gonna send to impaint again. This time you're only gonna paint the face, choose a denoising strength of around 0.2 and then click generate. And this is the final result. And now the face is of a higher resolution than before. And you can of course do this for every part of our body. And as you can see with a little bit of 3D posing and a little bit of photoshopping, we went from this image to this one super, super easily. And we have now a perfect image with a perfect hand done inside Stable Diffusion. So now you really have no excuse for creating bad hands inside Stable Diffusion. So definitely try out some of these tricks because this is really super powerful. And there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also a big thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. You guys are absolutely awesome. You are making these videos possible. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.